Hello and welcome to this virtual orientation to RevImaging, the leading image and file management solution for customers of Revolution EHR. Certainly appreciate your interest and would love to show you around the platform. Opening RevImaging is very easy through the patient header, whether I'm inside of an encounter or not. In this example, obviously I'm outside, I'm on the patient summary screen, and you can see that imaging button right here at the top of the, the screen underneath the patient name and uh, some of their demographic information. When I select that imaging button, you'll notice that it opens Rev Imaging in a second tab. There are a couple of valuable reasons for that. Number one is it gives me the ability to bounce back and forth between Rev Imaging Okay, and I can where I'd be viewing the patient's documents and images and the patient record. So I can be doing multiple things at the same time. The other potential advantage to it is if you are in a setting where you use multiple displays or multiple monitors, for example, some exam rooms will have one display for the doctor uh, uh, for documentation and a secondary display for patient education. You could actually have Rev Imaging open on that second display and not impact your ability to document during the course of the encounter. Now, within the, the Rev Imaging module, you'll see at the top of the screen there's patient name, date of birth, their age. There's a little button right next to that, which we'll define in a little bit. It is known as the Sync button. Beneath that is the main image viewing space. And then down as we get to the bottom, you'll see a thumbnail view of all of the images on file for this patient. Now, if you are storing your images for a patient on the individual pieces of diagnostic equipment that you use, there's a couple different ways to get that information into the patient record in Revolution EHR, but once it is there, all of your images will be available in this one place for each and every one of your patients. And you'll notice right away that I have the ability to scroll side to side, and every file that I see there, I have a thumbnail-based preview of. You can appreciate how valuable that can be when you consider that most diagnostic equipment today outputs files that have file names that don't really do a good job of letting you know exactly what, uh, what those files pertain to. So actually being able to see a thumbnail of what that file contains can be very, very helpful uh, in quickly finding what you need. Beneath that, you'll see that there are numbers over here on the lower right part of the screen. That is how you indicate how many images you would like how to have on the screen at one time. You can select between one, two, four, and eight. Obviously, the more images that you have on the screen, the more advantageous that can be to get a, a bigger view of the patient record, perhaps progression over time. Whereas the, the fewer the number of images, say one, for example, the more you are obviously going to focus on one single image and zero in and study that, uh, that singular image. Over to the left, we have certain organization options. We can see that date is selected right now, and what that means is my images and documents here are being organized by the date that they were performed. I have the ability to also sort by type. If I didn't want to sort by date, I could sort by type. And then you'll see that the uh, results here change to uh, files that were the result of visual field test, files that were the result of OCT. If I scroll through all these, we'll see I have a lot of OCT results, but then I have my photography images, and then at the end I have some that I didn't categorize. So it's really there to provide you flexibility uh, in terms of how you review a, a certain set of uh, images for a patient. I can even go more granular than this if I would like. For example, if I didn't want to see visual field OCT and photos and have all of those there, I could say just show me the visual field results for the patient and everything else disappears. So that's all there for you as organization and display options if you'd like to use them. To the left of that, we'll see roll. And what this does is it allows you to organize the display based on who may be using Rev Imaging. Um, as an example, if I open this, we'll see I have the ability to display all, clinical, or clerical. Now you can define these however you'd like, but most people will say that a clinical image is something that I use in the management of the patient case, what helps me care for the patient. Clerical, on the other hand, may be more administrative level documents. So it may be insurance related information. It may be uh, consent forms a patient signs. It may be a driver's license if that's something you do in your practice. Again, however you choose to define this, it's up to you. But the idea again would be, um, let me go back to date-based um, organization and I'm going to select clerical and it'll remove anything related to the clinical care of the patient. So if I am a front office team member, 
I may not want to see all those clinical images, but now I can see just the things that pertain to me. Similarly, if I'm in an exam room, maybe I just want to see the clinical images, right? I don't need to see patient exam, uh, excuse me, patient uh, insurance related information and, and, and associated information that way. Um, alternately, I could just say, I'm going to, I just want to see all things at all times. That's completely up to me. Again, providing another level of flexibility in how you work within Rev Imaging. The last uh, icon that you'll see over here looks like a folder. And what that does is it launches the same sort of view that documents images in, in the patient's document images folder um, does. And the reason for this is, although Rev Imaging provides you a lot of different ways to organize your views and, and uh, organize your files, if you didn't want to do that because you already had things organized in documents and images, you could use this workflow and you'd simply be selecting the various folders where you had the files of interest stored. Okay. So again, a lot of flexibility provided to you for um, the, the way that's going to work best for you in your practice. Now to open an image or to open a document, you simply select it from the viewer down below. You can see I have my preference set to two right now. So if I was to select two images, we would have them side by side. And we can see that we have a right visual field on the right side, a left visual field on the right side. It gives me that comprehensive view of how this patient performed on their last visual field. Um, Alternately, rather than selecting individual tests, I have the ability to select the header or the date in this example. So if I wanted to see all of the test results um, from April 18th of 2016, I can select the date and then everything will appear up here. Now I can see right away that there are seven images there. So if I only have two selected, I'm not gonna see everything. So I'm gonna expand this to eight and then I will select the date and we'll see all of those images will be loaded at once. Now, this also gives us the opportunity to talk about this sync icon that we talked about back in the beginning. The sync icon, what it's gonna do is allow me to influence everything on the screen uh, at the same time. So if I apply one idea, for example, if I zoom in on one image, I'm gonna end up zooming in on all of them. Okay, so if I select that sync button and then um, I select the zoom tool and then I zoom in, you'll see the same thing happen to all the images on the screen at one time. Okay, so that's what that sync button is all about. Now, alternately, you may notice that every single individual one of these images has a sync button associated to it. And the reason for that is maybe I don't want everything on the screen to be influenced by that action. Maybe I only want these fundus photos. Okay. So I'm going to uh, use the individual sync icons for the two fundus photos. I'm going to select the zoom icon and I'm going to zoom in on those two. Right? And I can see that I've now um, only zoomed in on the, the fundus photos. Nothing else has changed shape or size. So that's how the sync icon can influence actions that are taken on a particular image or all images. Now let's open a single image and go through the various actions that I can take on this singular image. Um, we notice over here, uh, there's a number of different icons that are available. I have one that says move, I have one that says reset, I have pan, I have zoom, I have rotate, I have some uh, administrative tools. These are how I categorize things. Remember we talked about clinical versus clerical and the different instruments that are associated. This gear icon is how I get to those settings. And then down below that I have certain brightness and contrast and color options. So right off the bat, if I go back up a little bit, you'll see I have this rotate option. That is something you can do to any image if that would be of use to the particular image. We talked about uh, zoom a little bit earlier as involving an icon, but there's a secondary way to do that that I'll share with you right now. Zoom and pan are two of the uh, actions that I can take on any image that I'm working with. Pan obviously means I can move the image around and without selecting the icon, I can access pan by left click and hold, and then I simply move the image around on the workspace. Similarly for zoom, I can right click and hold, and by dragging down, I zoom in on the image. So if I wanted to look right at the optic nerve or the fovea, I can do that, even in a zoomed in state. Now, if I change to the left mouse button and hold it, then I still have the ability to pan around the image and look at different spots inside it or inside it. Um, to zoom out, I just do the opposite action, right? I'm clicking and holding the right button and I will drag up. 
Okay, so that is how pan and zoom can work outside of accessing the individual tool. Above that is the reset button. So if I had zoomed in on an image and I wanted to get back to the natural state, I can select that button. The administrative tools, you'll see I can set the domain, which would be clinical or clerical. I can see that this one is already set to clinical. I can select the modality. Is this a photo? Is it OCT? Is it topography? And so on. I can set the submodality. Is it anterior sag? Is it optic nerve? Is it retina? I could even go further than that and say what instrument was used? Which eye did I scan? So there's all these different levels of organization that you can employ if, the, if you decide that that's um, how you'd like to do things in your practice. Again, there's absolutely no requirement that you do. It's just there for you if you'd like to use it. You also have the ability to delete and edit the date from this menu. Beneath that, as I said, you have color and brightness and contrast adjustment tools. So let's say you're working with a photo that was a little under or overexposed. By selecting this uh, tool that almost looks like a light or a sun, um, I have the ability to adjust contrast and brightness. So if I left click and drag up, you'll see that I'm adjusting the brightness up. If I drag down, I'm making the image darker. Okay. If I go back to the middle of the picture, and I drag to the left, I am increasing contrast, and to the right, I'm decreasing contrast. Okay, so these are just some of the um, options you have to adjust the brightness and contrast. Now, beneath that, I have the ability to apply some color filters, and I can cycle through all these. The idea being, there may be some scenarios where applying a certain color filter allows you to visualize certain areas of the photo or the document better. For example, in a case like this, where it may be hard to visualize cup to disc ratio, excuse me, cup to disc ratio, by changing the color filter, it may be a little bit easier to see those demarcations. Um, and of course, once I've applied a color filter, I can still zoom in and, and zoom out if I would like, and I can still pan around and, and do all all those normal um, other functions that we discussed. Now you also have the ability to organize your workspace however you'd like it. So let me choose these two fundus photos and then let's go back to those visual field results from earlier and I'll select both of those and right now we can see I have my right results on the uh, left side of the screen and my left eye on the right side of the screen and that may be perfect for you. That may be exactly how you'd like to work. But let's say you want the right eye results on the top and the left eye results on the bottom. What you do to make that happen is choose this tool right here, which says move. It's these four boxes. And what that allows me to do is uh, select and drag that file anywhere on the screen and it'll actually change place with that other file. So if I select, uh, left click and hold, and then drag that image up to the upper right, we're gonna see the visual field result and the fundus photo change spots. Okay, and now I have my screen oriented and arranged the way that I'd like. Um, and I can do that regardless of how many images are on the screen. And that's a summary of the features available in Rev Imaging. I hope it was helpful, but if you have questions, please feel free to let us know as we'd be more than happy to discuss in greater detail.